Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to video number 13 on concepts part 2, where we are going to talk about partitions, AST, the abstract syntax tree, optimizations and lazy evaluations. Now, I would like to start off by talking about partitioning. And the central question is, how can Spark actually distribute our workload among multiple machines? Because we have to divide our work in the end. Um, we are going to look at a simple example, for example, um, sum all the values of one column and how will we divide this one, for example, among three people. Therefore, I have created a small slide. On the left hand side, you can see a data frame containing a column C, which consists of a bunch of numbers. Now, if we wanted to parallelize the task of summing up all the numbers, we would basically divide this data frame into three partitions. And that's the term I would like to introduce here and then hand over each partition to one of our workers so that we have three tasks which our workers can perform. So they're basically building the sum of each of the partitions. And in the end, we have three sums which we have to sum up in turn. Now that's also the basic idea of map and reduce. So that will be a map task. Each of the partition gets evaluated individually and then the intermediate, intermediate results will be reduced into the final result. So in the end, we would have to build the sum from 10, 6 and 7, which is 23. Therefore, the level of parallelism in Spark is basically the number of partitions. Now, from a mathematical perspective, the definition of a partition is basically we are grouping values of a set into non-empty and pairwise disjoint subsets. So none of the two subsets contain the same element. So that each element is only assigned to one of the subsets and the all of the partitions together. So the union of the partitions forms the entire input set again. And that's basically what we have done with our data frame here intuitively. Now, usually we would aim for equal partition sizes because if we have equal partition sizes, all of our workers will need the same time to finish their tasks. However, because of the nature of most real world data, this is usually not the case. However, it would be the optimal way of partitioning data. For example, if we group our data frame by a particular key, so one column, the values of that column are usually not equally distributed, but rather um, most of the time they are skewed, which leads to performance issues in Spark and is one of the major problems when it comes to, or actually challenges when it comes to performance in Spark. Of course, there are workarounds, but these are more advanced topics. So we have learned that um, partitioning is basically the level of parallelism in Spark. So we use the partitions to schedule our work among, among various workers. And actually there will be one task, and that's also a Spark term, there will be one task for evaluating each partition, which will be scheduled to the workers from the driver. The next topic is AST, logical plan and the catalyst. So as we've learned, Spark provides us with a fully declarative and structured API, meaning that it defines as operators, for example, like filter and plus and minus and add something and then also select and so on. So we have a lot of functionality, which we can use from the API and we are dealing with structured data as our data frames actually have a schema. So Spark SQL actually knows what data to expect in each of the columns. We use this API in turn to tell Spark what we would like to do with our data frame and how we would like to transform the data in the data frame. And therefore we use these functions, for example, with column, group by and count and so on. So what happens is when we use the API to transform our data, Spark actually assembles an internal representation of the transformations we are using on the data, which is called the AST, so the abstract syntax tree, which basically is a tree. So we, we start from potentially multiple input nodes and then we transform um, columns or join data frames and so on. And Spark assembles our, our journey through the transformations in a tree. 
And having that internal representation, Spark can actually look at the tree and see where we have provided transformations which are not actually so efficient. So we can even optimize this tree. So what we have is an internal representation, which is basically abstract. So it doesn't depend on our, on the input API we're using. So we could use R or Python or Spark or even SQL, which all build up the same internal tree re representation in Spark. And then Spark will use the catalyst, which is the optimizer to look at the tree and actually to, um, for example, switch orders of operators in our tree or basically pu pushing down filters so that we filter earlier in our tree and so on. And that's how Spark actually optimizes the query for us. Therefore, the AST is actually a computational plan, an abstract computational plan, which uh, Spark builds up to understand what we are trying to do with our data. And actually, we can, from that AST, we can also tell how a data frame is derived from its parent data frame. And that's also what's called a lineage. So we can track how we can derive a result from the input data frames. And this AST, I would like to show you in our project now. All right, once we head over to our IDE, I would like to show you a different action on a data frame. Um, previously, we've been using show to print the first 20 lines to the console. Now what we would like to do is to call explain, which takes also a Boolean parameter extended, and we would like to set it to true and also use a, use a named Boolean parameter um, which will basically print the logical plan, which is the AST, which is the logical computational plan. How we, how can we derive the result from the input data frames and print it to the console? So once I run this, we can see what Spark has done to assemble our data frame transformation that we are using here in this project. Okay, so now it has completed. You can see that there are many plans. So at the very bottom, we have the physical plan, optimized logical plan, analyzed logical plan, and the logical plan, the parsed logical plan. All right, and here we can see the parsed logical plan, which is basically the result of our transformations that we've been using in our program. Now we start from the bottom, and there, for example, is a relation operator, which is basically a file read. And here we also see another detail, it is a CSV file read. And here we can see the column names that have been inferred from the CSV file. The second operator is a project, which basically um, is a renaming of the column names, because that's the, the first step that we have done. So we, we take a data frame and project it into a different data frame. Then we have a second project step, uh, step which is basically the uh, selection of columns and then we apply our window function which is basically the row number over a window definition over the extracted year from a date and sorted by uh, the closing price descending and so on so here we apply the row number introduce a new column rank and then we project it another two times having the rank and the final step is to filter all the rows to the ones where the rank is equal to zero. And all of that we have specified in our Sca uh, Scala program, and it has been transformed into that internal AST, AST, abstract syntax tree. And yeah, that's basically what the Spark SQL component is doing. And then it will be analyzed as well. So we check if all the um, columns are actually in the catalog and so on. And then Spark actually also optimizes this plan so that it can be executed most efficiently on the workers. And this logical plan is then passed into Spark Core actually. So there's code generated for the RDD API, which is uh, part of Spark Core. And this will then actually be executed on the workers from the driver but that is basically out of scope for this small video course here, um, how the Spark SQL API relates to the RDD API. For now, you only have to know that in our user program, 
we are using the SQL API to tell Spark what we would like to do. And Spark internally assembles this logical plan. All right, the third point in our small video today is lazy evaluation. And that's quite short. Now we have seen that we are assembling this logical plan and lazy evaluation means that we can call transformation. So we're transforming one data frame by applying a transformation into a different data frame and Spark keeps track of these tra transformation steps, but there is nothing happening on the machine. So the, the result is not evaluated until we call an action. So we have two kinds of yeah, methods that we can call on data frames. The one is a transformations, uh, transformation, which yields a new data frame. And the other one is an action, which triggers the execution. And the action is always that point in the chain where we actually want to see the result. For example, dot show is an action because we need to print the data to the console and therefore we actually have to load it from the CSV file. So dot uh, show is an action and then there's another action dot count where we actually want to count the rows. So we actually have to execute the CSV load and the, the filters and the transformations and so on so that we can say, okay, that's the count of the data frame. And that concept is actually called lazy evaluation because as long as we are only using transformations, no evaluation is happening. So therefore the uh, transformations are actually lazy and only once we call an action, the evaluation will be triggered and we schedule our workload on the cluster. All right, and that's it for this video. So we talked about partitions. It's the level of parallelism in Spark. We partition our input data so that we can distribute these uh, workloads on our machines. And actually what we do when we program a Spark application in the Spark uh, API or the Python API or the R API or SQL API, the only thing that's happening is that Spark assembles an internal representation of what we are telling it to do. So we basically abstract away um, the logical operations we want to perform on the data. And then Spark actually also optimizes them automatically um, to be executed most efficiently. So there are predefined rules how we can optimize logical plans. And only once we call an action, this logical plan will be executed on the cluster. Before we call an action, nothing will be scheduled on the workers. The only thing that happens when, when we use transformations is that Spark the, in the driver program assembles a logical plan. So thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.